Hello, my name is Brian. Um, here, I'm playing with Excel. I really was frustrated with this data set, so I thought I'd make a little video rather than trying to voice all my frustrations. Um, my first problem with this data set, it's just, one, we don't know what they're trying to study, so analyzing it is very difficult. And then, uh, second, the, the data doesn't seem to be formatted in a very useful way for us. For example, here, if I click on these values, and I'm going to hide myself, uh, if I click on these values, um, for this survey question here, they're not integers. It's 2.5, 1.53. I need to fix that. What I'm going to do to fix that is hit Control F, which is defined, and I'm going to replace. So I'm going to have it find all the values of 0 0.5 and replace them with 1. Um, hit Replace All, and it made all six replacements. And I'm going to have it find all the values of 1.5 and replace them with 2, replace all, and uh, I'm going to keep on going with this. I'm going to pause. You don't need to see me do all this. Okay, so I just finished replacing all the values. I can close this. And now I have something that is a little more useful. I also, I don't need all this extra data. I don't, I don't know what these columns are. So I'm just going to get rid of some of these columns just to make this a little bit more manageable for me. Credits to date. I'm going to get rid of that one too. Um, just cleaning this up a little bit, making it something that I can use a little bit better. Um, I also had a hard time keeping track of these questions later on, so what I'm going to do is just copy uh, the column headers rather than freezing them and put them down here just for easier reference for me. Um, now the next thing I want to do is just do a pretty simple uh, mean and uh, median calculations for everything here. So the mean, again, that's just the average. So I can just click the average function, go in, select all these columns, and hit enter and it gives me a mean and the median I can just type in the median um, and get the median function and it will do the same for me Ooh, there's a lot there's 55 values here um, this is where it's nice that it does it for and then I can just drag these values over drag them both all the way over and copy all those values in which is nice so it will be all done for me and I have the mean and the median um, just some basic statistics if I just wanted to get like a rough estimate here, I guess, looking at this data, uh, what was, were some of these higher or lower, and they're all twos, uh, threes and fours, except for there's a couple of twos in here in the writing usefulness category. Okay, the next thing I want to do is a function called count if, because we know the values, they can either respond with a one, a two, three, four, or five. Um, and I want to know how many of those I have. I'm also going to keep track of the total here. And using the count if function is going to count in that column how many people responded in a certain way. So I just did equals um, count if, use this count if function, double click on that, and I'm going to select this whole column up ahead because I want to count in response to this first question here. In general, I'm a good writer. I want to count all those, and I go down here, um, and I'm going to use the command function. I want to count how many I use a comma, how many of those were a one, right? Or I can refer it to a cell number like I just did here. I can say how many of those were that value there, hit enter, and it's going to tell me there's only one of those. Now the nice thing is if I go back up to this, I can lock these values in by putting a dollar sign in front. I can lock the cells inside here. And this is just going to keep my functions working the way I want them to later on. So I can lock all those values inside there. And now when I copy this down, I get numbers. And hopefully they add up to 55 equals sum. Oops, sum. And the only reason I'm doing this is just to check my math. I want to make sure that, yes, they add up to 55. So now I can take these values here, indeed this one at the bottom, and just drag that whole thing over, and it's going to calculate that number for each of these inside of there for me for all of them. And I can just check the sum column on the bottom here. They all, all add up to 55. Now, this is something that a human can look at this and go, oh, I see that there um, are more people here that answer to three for this question than for that question. And that could be certainly be a little bit useful. But to find a way to graph this is what we really want to be able to do. Okay, for my graph, I want to do this based on percent is what I'm going to do. So percent uh, that I want to calculate. And what's the percent of, I guess, one, two, three, four, and five? Uh, and then I guess I can do a sum just to check my math there. So what's the percent of the ones up here? Well, that's going to equal uh, the number that were one over here divided by the total, which every time is 55. So I can get that, and I get this number here, and then I can just 
drag that down. Now these are not formatted properly, so I need to format those cells as a percentage. I'm going to go just to zero decimal places, and then I, I want to check my math again and use this sum function to make sure I do have 100%. It's just good to check my check my wrath. Yay, and it's 100%. So now I can take these values and run them over this way. And it's going to do all that calculating for me as percentages. So I can see the percentages of people who answered um, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 for all these. I should probably check my math here. These should all up to 100. Oh, I didn't drag that before. Um, and they do. That's great. Now, it might be more useful for me rather than having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, if I look up at the top here, these were strongly disagree, disagree, um, neutral, agree, somewhat agree. So maybe I should use those headings instead. So this is strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, agree, strongly agree. Um, more useful headings. Because now what I can do, I can come in here and select for this whole group here. And this is why I kept these headings up here just a little bit, the writing, writing usefulness, that's a whole category. So inside of this category of Likert items, so it's a Likert scale now, I can take the percentages of these folks and not using the sum. I'm just going to take those eight writing usefulness Likert um, categories and graph them. So if I select them, I go up to insert a chart, and the kind of chart I want to use here is a... Um, a table that looks like this, a stacked column table. Um, I like the stacked column. Some people like to have a stacked bar going the other way. I'm going to do the stacked column, hit OK, and there it is, right? And the, the labels on my axes here, let me get this unwieldy chart. This is one of the things I truly dislike about Excel. Um, it's a little bit cumbersome to move things around. So now my chart title, this was the writing usefulness. I'm just going to call it writing real quick because I don't want to spend too much time writing. Um, and then these are the questions, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, those eight questions corresponding up above and color coded by do they strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, agree, or somewhat agree. So I can look really quickly at this since it's color coded and see where things lie or what percentage of respondents were inside of here. And that's one useful thing. I could do the same thing, just drag that whole, um, over to the to the next one if I wanted to, which I might as well. So if I go over here, I'm going to add in the categories here of uh, strongly agree, agree. Uh, oops, this is strongly disagree, right? Strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, um, agree, and strongly agree. So I can select all of this stuff, take it over for it. I just want to do the values of the, the writing one. Insert chart. I got two minions running around behind me. Okay, and there's my chart. This was for the reading. I think it is what it was. Or was it reading or problem solving or what was it? It was revision and models. So I'm just going to call it models. Models. Uh, all right, and I can get it out of the way here. I don't need to format this chart anymore. And if I get this somewhere down by the other one, maybe. I can compare these two for the for the class. So looking here, I can see there were seven questions. Oops, and I get in my eight because I messed this up. I didn't get my uh, same data labels. Sorry about that. I guess I need to put those labels. I need to insert a row between the two question categories and to get the labels for STD, NA, and SA instead of series one, series two. It's the same. All right, that's just changing the logo. I'm not going to take the time to change that right now since I'm hip deep into this video. But I can see here uh, these values tend to be higher. So the students valued the modeling questions much higher than they did these writing questions. So that could be something of interest. You could do a similar analysis comparing groups of students maybe by by their class average. So like again, this is an unwieldy data set, but I could take this this um, the average percentile to find out how did this change for um, uh, the the students in the group uh, based on their on their overall score. Now, when we look at individual Likert items, uh, we were told in the video that make, comparing the median makes more sense, um, and I could I could do that. Um, find what the median of this data is. I think it's like 79 or something like that. Um, yeah, 79, and I could do the mean. So if I took, 
like those top, I could resort these, uh, all of these individuals. I could take this chunk here, go to sort and filter, sort these largest to smallest. I'm going to expand the whole selection to all of them. Um, okay. So it, it will, so it didn't let me do it because of things are different sizes. Um, it's all messed up. It's merged again, bad data set. But if I took these, I could sort them into groups and apply the same analysis and then look to see how did this distribution of trends compare for the high achieving students and the low achieving students in the group. Again, that's the, I don't know what the question is that the, that we're trying to answer with this whole research in the first place. Okay, one more item that might be um, of interest to some people is I could take this same data for one of the questions and using um, just the, the quick chart, I just go quick analysis, um, use a quick chart and do a, a quick clustered column, which is a histogram. Um, looking at that, I can see using this, is the data normalized or not? So just there's that one real quick and I can compare it to, to this one here, Qu quick analysis, chart, clustered column and I can see the differences between these two how how this one is more more normal but not really uh, this one is definitely skewed to the left so I could use that if I was trying to decide can I use um, different types of analysis when I compare these anyway hope that was useful um, for you mm -hmm. <laughs> all right I'm gonna go play with these guys <laughs> have a good day